Or let's go to Prague. He, in a previous life, was an advisor to the Czech Republic's uh, first post-Soviet era president, uh, Václav Havel. Jacques Rupnik, director of research at the French Political Science Institute, Sciences Po. Thank you for speaking with us here. Good evening. Uh, the, the Czech Republic has seen uh, uh, its uh, uh, support uh, it's for, for Europe and NATO wax and wane, if you look at politicians. Uh, it's a resounding win, though, uh, for the pro-Ukraine uh, camp with this uh, uh, presidential election. Well, it's, it's above all a domestic election, so it was a, mainly a victory of the, let's say, uh, liberal center-right uh, candidate uh, uh, versus the uh, populist uh, uh, candidate uh, Andrei Babish. And uh, since you mentioned Ukraine, indeed, it played a part in, in, the, uh, in the campaign in one of the debates. Uh, uh, you had it mentioned in the previous uh, um, uh, report that uh, uh, Babish, uh, who presented himself as a candidate of peace, and he's running against a general who was a NATO general. And the implication, well, he's a warmonger. So I will preserve you from uh, the war in Ukraine. And then at the next question, you know, would you help Poland? If Poland were attacked, he said, no, no, I'm a man of peace, etc. And therefore, that's where he lost it, because that meant he was not respecting, he was not observing Article 5 of NATO, which is supposed to protect all of us, uh, 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 all of the members of the NATO. That is, he was therefore seen as somebody undermining the credibility and the security of his own country. So I think that was a major flaw. And uh, well, there were many, uh, many other issues, of course, in the in the campaign, uh, including uh, uh, the attempt by Babish, his uh, uh, opponent. Uh, to uh, present him as a candidate of the government. And the government is undergoing a difficult situation, like all governments in Europe, uh, partly because of the war in Ukraine, but not only, uh, due to the uh, inflation, which is running at 16 percent here, uh, the, the price of energy, the uh, cost of living, everything. So the idea was to present this president, a uh, uh, new president, newly elected president, as a man uh, who was simply the figurehead of the government. And uh, well, that didn't work out either. Uh, so uh, Peter Pavel was uh, indeed elected with a deci decisive victory, you know, 58%. Uh, uh, I think that, that that's, a, uh, that's a very decisive victory. And that means that he will be able to work with the government, but from a very strong position. The, the Czech Republic, it, it's a former Warsaw Pact uh, nation. Now that you've had this invasion uh, uh, of Ukraine by Russia, do people there see today as living in uh, a new era? You talked about that high inflation, that that high inflation is the price to bear in the face of a threat. Indeed. Well, that is that is certainly the context in which the election uh, uh, was framed. And uh, uh, yes, the, the, the question of uh, uh, the democratic system and how can it be sustained uh, uh, in times of uh, crisis and in times of war. And obviously, this is part of Putin's strategy to have uh, uh, the war and the cost of war uh, undermine the uh, governments, the democratic governments in uh, in the European Union. The only place where it has worked so far is Hungary, where he's got some support. Uh, but uh, otherwise, no. The the the, the this uh, the, the Czech election is a, is a resounding no to that. Indeed, what the Czech election suggests is that the Visegrad group, the idea that these four countries, Poland, Hungary, Czech Republic, and Slovakia, are one block, which is drifting away from democracy, so-called illiberal democracy, and is also in a kind of Eurosceptic mood, well, that is no longer, that is no longer true. Uh, basically, Hungary and Poland 
are no longer speaking to each other <laughs> because uh, of the war in Ukraine. They, they, they have a very opposite view of that. Poland very committed, Hungary uh, 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 rather giving the benefit of the doubt to Putin. So although they have a similarly illiberal regimes, they are very uh, on opposite side but, on the war but, issue. In the Czech case, you have now uh, a clear assertion, a rejection of this semi-authoritarian illiberal drive uh, that we have seen elsewhere, and you have a clear commitment to the European Union and to NATO. So from that point of view, the Czech case now is departing from the Central European pattern. Yeah, and how isolated then is Hungary, which, as you say, uh, is the outlier? Can it just turn more and more to Russia? Uh, I don't think it will, because there is nothing to gain there. Uh, Hungary is a member of the European Union. It derives huge benefits from being a member of the European Union. If you get 3% of your GDP in EU transfers to Hungary, well, you think twice before slamming the door. And uh, on the other hand, the idea is, uh, I mean, this is the rhetoric of Orban, I want to preserve you from entering into a war that nobody here uh, 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 wants. And I will also ensure a, a supply of Russian gas at a good price. That kind of argument. So it's it's not, uh, uh, whereas, whereas I think the, the, the Polish attitude, which is much more, you know, strident support, clear support, military support to, uh, uh, to, to, to Hungary, the Czechs are much closer to that. They are providing uh, uh, economic support, uh, humanitarian support. There are half a million Ukrainian refugees in the Czech Republic. It's a country of 10 million people, and they have almost half a million Ukrainian refugees. And they also give uh, a, a degree of military support as well. So on the Ukrainian war issue, the Czech Republic is much closer to Poland. On the domestic political system, the illiberal, I mean, the Polish government is a uh, is now considered to be illiberal regime, not quite as far as Hungary, but pretty, you know, on the on the rule of law issue, on the on the on on the media, on number of issues, uh, uh, Poland is very different from what the Czech Republic is. So, and, and just one final question on this. Uh, Peter Pavel uh, uh, taking on, uh, you might say, Beijing. Uh, what with he that phone call he had, he re he accepted a congratulatory phone call from the president of Taiwan earlier. Yes, indeed, and that that will be uh, that will be a very interesting thing because, and that's a departure from his predecessor, the predecessor President Zeman, who is in Belgrade today, incidentally. Uh, 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 the, 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 his predecessor was very crossed when the president of the Czech Senate went to Taiwan and basically took a very strong line in support of Taiwan against China. So the uh, Zeman, the previous, uh, I mean, the current president still until until the 8th of March, um, uh, had a, a sort of a soft spot for China and had a fairly pro-Russian policy until 24 of uh, February last year when the war started and he made a U-turn and basically said he had been wrong. He admitted he had been wrong about, about Russia. The current president, I mean, the new president that's going to be uh, uh, inaugurated in, in March, uh, will have a much tougher line on China, it seems. Uh, we will have to see. And certainly will be a very strong support for Ukraine in its confrontation uh, uh, with, uh, with Russia. You would expect that from a, from a general and a former member of the NATO uh, command. Jacques Rupnik, uh, teacher at uh, the French Political Science Institute Sciences Po, thank you for being with us from Prague. Pleasure. Good evening.